Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number two from the Pure Mathematics P3 International A-Level at Excel, October 2022 paper. Um, this question here is all about functions, and we're given two functions, f of x, which is a reciprocal function, which is 5 minus 4 over 3x plus 2, and have, has a domain um, where x is greater than or equal to 0. And then you have g of x, which is a modulus function inside which there is a trig, trig function, with a modulus of all of 4 times the sine of the angle x plus 3 plus pi over 6. And here, x, is the, the domain of this function is all real numbers. So we have to find the range of the function f first. All right, so a few things that are very important for us to realize. Um, and one of them is the fact that when they give you a function and they give you a domain, right, that's, that, that thing is not there just for decoration like maybe you might have imagined in, for example, IGCSE maths when you didn't really have to use um, those things that were written down next to functions a lot of times. Okay, here, in, in, you know, when you get to um, A-level maths, it's very important. This domain will decide how we draw on how we write down the domain and range of these functions. They will affect it, okay? So if, the, if it's limited between certain values, then if the domain is limited between certain values, then the range will also be limited because this function only exists where x is greater than or equal to 0. It doesn't exist when x is less than 0, all right? So... Um, the way to deal with such questions, a lot of students, they say, oh, sir, you know, is there a way to do it apart from drawing? I don't like drawing, all right, or sketching. Well, to be honest, the best way to deal with such questions about range and domain is by drawing, okay? That's really the best way to deal with them, okay? Um, at least by picturing what it looks like. You might not have to draw it after a while when you can picture what it looks like, but it's by far the, the most um, kind of... The best way to understand it and the easiest way to deal with it, even though maybe it might not work, be worth so many marks, is to make a little sketch. And it, it shouldn't really take you long once you've got used to it. So the first thing you determine is what type of function do we have. And here we can see we have a reciprocal function. And the parent function for a reciprocal function is 1 over x. Okay, it's got something to do with 1 over x. So you see that you're going to have uh, asymptotes here. All right, you're going to have asymptotes. So the first thing we ask ourselves when we have a reciprocal function are what are the asymptotes? Now, the vertical asymptote is going to be the value of x which causes the denominator to become zero. In this case, all right, so we can say that the vertical asymptote is going to be when 3x, 3x plus 2 is equal to zero. That means when x is minus 2 thirds. Now, this is not in our domain. All right, so that asymptote won't be in our domain, but I'm going to still draw it, and then at the end, I'm going to get rid of all the parts that are not in our domain. Okay, so that will be the vertical asymptote. So if I just make a pair of axes, even though it's not in our domain for now, I'm going to just draw, I'm just going to make a sketch. Okay, so I'm just making a sketch. Now, some people say that my lines don't come out vertical. That's all right. Sometimes it doesn't, I can't see it very well. Maybe the angle I'm sitting. Anyway, um, and then you're going to have your um, x-axis. All right, so the asymptote, okay, is going to be somewhere here, x equals minus two-thirds. All right, so that's x equals minus two-thirds. That will be the, the vertical asymptote. No, sorry, the, uh, the, yeah, the vertical asymptote. Now, the horizontal asymptote is given by the number that's added to the whole function, okay, because um, that causes, see, the, the reason why x can't be um, negative two-thirds, it makes the denominator zero. And the reason why y can't be 5, if I try to solve the equation when I put y equals 5, 5 equals 5 minus 4 over 3x plus 2. If I make y equals 5, what happens is I subtract 5 from both sides. I end up with 0 equals minus 4 over 3x minus 2. When I try to solve this equation by multiplying both sides by 3x minus 2, I'm left with this contradiction. Does it make sense? All right. So y equals 5 causes this contradiction. So y equals 5 is an asymptote. So we have an asymptote at y equals 5. So I know that that's another asymptote, y equals 5. Okay, so that's x equals minus 2 thirds and y equals 5. All right, now, the other thing I've got to see is what type of... I know that the 1 over x, it will, it will look like this. It will go in these two quadrants. Now, this has got a minus in front of the whole of that fraction. So therefore, it's going to now switch over to these two quadrants instead. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it in in these two quadrants. So it's going to be in, in this quadrant for sure. So it's going to be it's going to be in this side of the asymptote. And it's going to be on this side of the asymptote. Now I've got to figure out where does it cross the y-axis that will help me to draw it. So if I figure out where it crosses the y-axis, where it crosses the y-axis when x is zero. So we can say when x is zero, we have y equals five minus four over, that's going to be zero plus two, which is two, five minus two, which is three. So that means it crosses the y-axis at three. So it's going to go something like this. Let me draw it a bit more realistically. It's going to go something like this. And it's going to get closer and closer to the asymptote without touching it. So it's going to go through the y-axis at 3. Okay? That's the y, y, um, the y-intercept. So that's the graph of this function when the domain is all real numbers apart from, of course, the asymptote. All right? However, our domain starts when x is equal to 0 and, it, and it's all the values of x which are greater than 0. So that means I need to get rid of all of this part of the graph and all of this part of the graph until x equals 0. So our value includes this number here which is um, x equals 0 and y equals 3 and you can see the range. Now the range of a function are all the values that exist for it in the y uh, direction. All right. So the range of this function is going to be basically um, let me just make this a bit smaller. The range is going to be basically from there up to there. Okay, that's the range of this function. Okay, the y values um, between 3 and 5. But it includes 3, it doesn't include 5. Okay, so we can say here that the range of this function is the y values greater than or equal to 3 and less than 5. You can also put, if you want, f of x like this, but it can't include 5. It's up to 5 without including 5 because that's an asymptote. It never reaches 5. And we have to exclude all of this other stuff. If it was all real numbers, if the if this was x is an element of all real numbers, then I would write, you know, the range is all real numbers except for y equals 5. I would say that y is an element of all real numbers, and I would say except for y equals 5, y can't equal 5, something like this, all right? But this is, the domain of our function is restricted to y, x is greater than 0. Therefore, the range of our function is restricted according to how this graph looks without the negative part of it being there, which is, it only exists between 3 and 5 on the y, the y coordinates, the y values, that'll be the only places you'll find this on the y, okay, between 3 and 5 including 3, not including 5. So that's how you can find the range of a function. Um, and once you've got a bit of practice of drawing them, it's quite clear. So you have to be very proficient at drawing or sketching, not drawing actually, but sketching um, reciprocal graphs, cubic graphs, quadratic graphs, and so on, so that you can be able to do this quickly. All right? So, um, and you have to take care that the domain is not there to be a decoration. Actually, it affects our answer. Okay, so that's very, very important for us to understand. So the short answer is, yes, I can see that the y, the, y, the asymptote is going to be equal to 5 on the x, on the y, sorry. All right, I can see that the, 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 the y the asymptote is going to be 5 because the numbers adding to it is going to be 5. All right, and I can also see that the x asymptote is going to be minus 2 thirds by looking, just making this denominator 0. The 4 just has an effect of... Like if I had 4 over x, this is 1 over x, this is 4 over x. It just has an effect of um, pushing out the curve further from the origin. It doesn't really um, affect too much otherwise, apart from where it crosses axes and stuff like that. So the main things are, this is the y, y asymptote, y, you know, the horizontal asymptote, and the x value that goes in here is the um, asymptote, um, the vertical asymptote, okay, the one that goes through the x. Um, and once you've got those, and then you can see that there's a minus here. That means um, it's, you know, in the normally 1 over x will be like this. So minus 1 over x will be in the other two quadrants. Like that's how we work that out. Okay, and then you can find where it crosses the y-axis. If we, if we were going to draw the whole thing, we'd also find where it crosses the x-axis the, 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 the x by putting y equals 0 and solving. To so put y equals 0 and then solve the equation, you would find the x-intercept. But we don't have to here because our domain is from x equals 0 and above. All right, so there's your answer to part A. 
Um, I hope that was clear. All right. And now for part B, it says find f inverse f uh, minus one x means find the inverse of the function f. Find the inverse of the function s. And then part two says write down the domain of the function f. Now, what are the mistakes that people make in this question, which is noted in the examiner's report? is that um, they mistake this for the differential and some, some people start differentiating this and that's completely wrong. No, it's not the differential. The differential is f dash of x. That's the differential. This is the inverse. Okay, so to find the inverse of a function, basically what we're doing is we're finding the function that undoes it. So what we do is we make the y the x and the x the y and then we rearrange it. So for example, here we have y equals 5 minus 4 over 3x plus 2. So the next step, what we do is we change the y and call it x. So we're not rearranging it right now. We're just changing the y for x and changing the x for y. So that becomes 3y plus 2. And then when we make y the subject, the expression that we find will be the inverse of the function. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the y here the subject. So first thing I will do is I will add this whole fraction 4 over 3 y plus 2 to both sides and I also subtract x from both sides just to keep this positive and then I can do is I can cross multiply I can multiply both sides by 3y plus 2 and divide both sides by 5 minus x leaving us with 4 over 5 minus x equals 3y plus 2 and okay, so now to uh, isolate the y term to make y the subject we've got to first of all subtract 2 from both sides so we have 4 over 5 minus x take away 2 equals 3y and then we've got to divide both sides by 3 so we can say 4 over 3 times 5 minus x minus 2 over 3 equals y so this is the inverse function for um, f which is as I mentioned 4 over 3 times 5 minus x minus 2 thirds we could also write this as 4 over 15 minus 3x minus 2 thirds or we could make this into one fraction all of that is perfectly fine okay so um you know there's no issue with 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 doing that either way all right so um there's absolutely no 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 issue with that so you, you can leave it like this you can write this as one fraction by combining the denominators making the denominators the same multiplying this by 2 by 5 minus x and then adding or subtracting those numerators and that's fine but we can leave it like this is perfectly fine there's no uh, problem if you leave it like that no need to go into more detail so write down the domain as well so this is part one part two is write down the domain of the inverse now when it says write down what it means is it's something really easy okay so we don't have to actually think about what the domain of this is going to be um you know in terms of uh, you know manipulating any you know doing anything algebraic what we should understand is that the domain of the original function so the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse and vice versa so the range of the inverse function the range of the inverse is the same as the domain of the original so what is the domain of the original function where well, we already uh, was the range of the original function okay uh, we already found that out to be f of x is between 3 and 5 including 3 not including 5 so therefore the domain of the inverse function will be exactly this but without f of x you should write x the domain is the x values the range is the y values of the f of x values so this is going to be between 3 and 5 including 3 not including 5 but we're going to say this is the domain okay of the inverse function okay so that's how we write the domain very simple that's why it says write down it's, and that part is only worth one mark so there we have part b done and now we're going to go on to part c so here it's telling us to find the composite function fg minus pi okay so there's two ways we could do this we could find the composite function fg of x but i think that's going to be a lot of hassle that means you have to take this function and substitute it inside here. Okay, which you could do, but it's going to look a bit weird and funny. The easiest way of dealing with this is first find what's g of minus pi. Okay, and then 
find what that is and substitute that value into the function f and you're going to you're going to be doing the same thing right so this is um fg of we can say that fg of minus pi is the same as finding the fg of minus pi it means you find what g minus pi is and put it inside the function f so let's first find what g of minus pi is that means we've got to replace the x in function g with minus pi so you have the modulus of 4 times the sine of, and you're going to have minus pi over 3 plus pi over 6. All right, so that gives us the modulus of 4 times the sine of, this is like minus 2 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, so the sine of minus pi over 6. Okay, which is the same as the modulus of 4 times, now the sine of minus pi over 6. Now, pi over 6 is 30, so minus 30, the sine is minus a half. So 4 times minus a half. Just to confirm that, we can take the calculator. And we can put in radian mode, which is in radian mode, we put sine of minus 1 um, pi over 6. So pi divided by 6. That gives you minus a half. Yep, okay, good. So you have the modulus of negative 2. And we know the modulus of negative 2 is equal to 2. The modulus means just the value without the negative sign. So if, it's if it says modulus of 2, the answer would be 2. The modulus of negative 2 is also 2. You just get rid of the minus sign if it has 1. Okay, it's like how far the number is away from 0 on the number line without the direction. Okay, so that's g minus pi. So g minus pi is equal to 2. So therefore, we want to find f g minus pi, which would be f 2 which is when you take the function f, which is up here, and we replace the x with 2. So we have 5 minus 4 over 3 times 2 plus 2. Okay, so that gives us 5 minus 4 over, that's 8, which is 5 minus a half, which is 4 and a half. So 4 and a half, there's the answer. So we can say, therefore, that f of g of minus pi is equal to 4.5 or 4.5. There's the answer to question number 2c. So that's a composite function where one function it goes inside the other. All right. As I said, it's easier here to find g minus pi first and then put it inside function f rather than finding an expression which will look really complicated of f g of x first. All right. So there's the answer to that question. Um, number two from this paper, other questions from this particular topic of functions can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over there. Other questions from um, the, 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 the topic of functions can be found in this, sorry, so from this particular paper, October 2022, over this, in this uh, playlist over here. From the topic of functions, you can find a playlist that will appear somewhere in this region. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.